Gentlemen, we'll call this uh, February meeting of the Valdosta Lowndes County Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Everyone in attendance, please make sure that you've signed in on the attendance sheet at the back of the room. Uh, before we will begin, I'll explain the process for the meeting. I will call each case on a case by case name and case number. The case or county, the, I'm sorry, the city or county representing staff will come to the lectern and present the facts of the case. After presentation, the board may or may not ask the staff questions. Once the board has heard the case and asked all questions necessary of the staff, we will move on to hearing from either the applicant or the applicant's representation. After hearing from the applicant, we will hear from anyone else who wishes to express support for the case. Finally, after that, we will hear from anyone who wishes to express opposition to the case. Anyone addressing the board will please come to the lectern and give their name and address for the record. For clarity and respect, we ask that only the person at the lectern address the board and that the audience give them an uninterrupted chance to be heard. If there is important information that you feel we need to consider, then please come to the lectern when it is your turn and you are called. It is the interest of in the interest of time, though, the board asks that you keep your, keep your comments brief and to the point. Please do not come to the lecture to, to only restate the same information that has already been given to us. Once the board has had a chance to hear from all sides on the matter and ask any questions we feel are necessary, then we will render a decision. If we do not feel that the necessary information is available to render a decision today, then we may decide to table the case for the next meeting. Please be aware that this board is here today only to address various applications to the zoning codes for the Lowndes County and the City of Valdosta. This is the only matter on which this board has been given the power to render decisions. We cannot and do not have power to address any other matters that are not covered by the zoning codes of Lowndes County or the City of Valdosta. Now, we will call the first item on the agenda, uh, Lowndes County Case VAR. 2019-02, Ryan Adams, 2734 Long Pond Road, Lake Park. Uh, Ms. Carmella? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Carmella Braza. It's been a while since I've been up here. <laughs> but our first case is a variance request by Mr. Ryan Adams. The subject property is located at 734 Long Pond Road, City <coughs> Lake Park, Georgia. The property is currently zone R10 and is located in the Two Lakes Overlay District. We've been working with the applicant for a couple of months to ensure his compliance with the ODC exit thanks to the minimum setback requirements. In this case, Mr. Adams is requesting a variance to the minimum side of setback, the requirements to feet. And the applicant has constructed um, a deck that is only four feet from the property line. So he's requesting a four foot variance. I tried to put together some pictures to give a visual of what's going on with the property. This is the visual from the road, the long run road. Visual from the deck itself, the lower right corner, looking towards the road. And that's the deck in the system all in itself. Um, the applicant is willing to do what he needs to do to correct the problem. Um, we tried to work with him on the administrative variance side um, where staff can release some, but we couldn't do it to the extent of what we was needing. So he's requesting a variance so the day can stay where it is. Um, staff reviewed the request, the request and had no objection or comments regarding the variance request. Um, I did speak with applicants some to ask them to be prepared 
you know, to have some options that he can offer to the board. Um, this did come by a complaint from a neighbor, and um, their complaint was more or less uh, privacy. And um, I believe the applicant can speak to you on what he can do. I also received a letter from um, a nearby property owner. I think all of you all have that, not have a copy. Carmela, is there any issue with the height of the deck, or is it just the proximity of the deck to the property? It's the proximity of the deck to the property line. Okay. So if you were four feet back away from the line, the deck would be perfectly fine. That's correct. Okay. As we've talked today, I have a problem being a property owner at Long Pond. These lots of record are all very, very narrow. Some of them are as narrow as 45 feet wide. Uh, it's hard to take ULDC rules that came about recently and apply them to lots that already have houses on them and buildings, just like the established shed is eight inches from the property line. Um, when I went out and visited this property, I think the new dock not dead, but the new dock was put exactly where the old dock was. Is that correct? As far as the dock, I'm not sure. Okay, okay I'll just go back. Um, and another thing I'd like to come in on is if anybody has a, a place down there, privacy is almost impossible. I don't think that's where you go for privacy. <laughs> Probably as you ask that, we are in the process of looking at the current Twin Lakes Overlay District, revamping what we have and the rules uh, because of some recent occurrences down there. But to answer your question, when the zoning ordinance was adopted, which was in the early 70s, there were setback requirements. In what the was the time? The um, knowing that a lot of structures didn't meet that requirement and they were considered legal non conforming. And in the case of legal non conforming, you can keep what you have, but if you change out, reconstruct, you know, kind of lose the key. So in this case, you know, the rules were 10 feet, current rules were 10 feet. Um, that's something that The existing shed is still existing at just a few inches off of the property line. Is that correct? That is correct. And I wasn't real sure when that structure was I noticed that you made a recommendation, or staff made a recommendation um, for options to secure the privacy along the south line, and I guess that would be between the applicant and Mr. Ellis, who wrote the letter. What suggestions are y'all thinking about? We were open, and I wanted the applicant to address that. Um, he may have some ideas. I think at one point, there was an agreement between him and his neighbor on what could be done to um, address that concern. And I think he can probably Here or somebody representing them would like to speak? Sure. And if we can get your address for the record. Sure. Uh, Ryan Adams, 951 South Broadway Street. Thank you, Mike. A lot of the stuff is already in the letter, so I'm not going to say that, as you stated earlier. Um, I was the first page. I have made an honest attempt to follow all the rules and regulations. I, I was not aware of the uh, zoning requirements at the time that I uh, moved forward with this. Um, after speaking with, with a lot of people, the zoning never came up. So 
this is my first uh, remodel job, so uh, I just kind of went ahead and did it. And, and um, based on what I saw all around the lake, kind of where I went with it, and I took, took some, some pictures or the up that there, this is kind of what you see around the lake. Um, uh, decks touching, docks touching each other, uh, so on and so forth. And based on the nature of the round, the round of the lake, your neighbor can see right in your backyard, no matter where you are. Um, so uh, that kind of came into play a little bit. So um, I redid the whole house inside and out, top and bottom. Um, obviously, the benefit of the remodel, you, know, you got to know what those are, the property values and such. Um, but the shed, was uh, fairly old, and um, I, I redid the shed uh, inside and out uh, as well. Um, for the benefit of my neighbor, it was real close to, to the property line, it, it, it's fairly ugly. But so anyway, I, did, uh, I redid the whole shed with, with him in mind. Um, the dock itself, or the deck, is built way over the code, uh, with my neighbors in mind, because I mean, it's built with way more wood than what code calls for. Uh, it's never going to sag, never going to warp. It's going to look nice for years, 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 years to come. And I did that with both my neighbors and mine. Because my neighbor neighbor on the north side of the big boat house that looked right down on my house. Um, so I wanted to look nice for him as well. The uh, dock itself is in the same exact spot as the old dock. And I built it extremely low uh, for my neighbor on the south side of the trail. I had not block the view of the lake. To my view of the lake block, on the north side, about a few months boat house, and uh, so I didn't do that him. So I, I built mine really low, just for that reason. Um, I, I don't have a boat house. It's just a really low profile uh, uh, dock. So you know, I did a lot of things with, with my neighbors of mine, and uh, uh, originally I had my deck built to the property line. Yeah, I mean, it was touching, it was real close to the fence. Um, but after speaking with him, um, you know, I mean, we got to back it up as, as far as I could without tearing down my dock and my stairs and, and, and all that stuff. So, so, so now the uh, deck is real perfectly even the dock. Um, and four foot is where it went. So, so I did that. I didn't just cut it all in. I built, rebuilt it uh, four feet back. And uh, uh, subsequently, um, that I get to change the line. Perfect when I get to change the line. Um, that was good enough. So, what I'm suggesting is, is, is um, you know, you want, if you got to prove it how it is, uh, I still plan on doing a 12-foot private center. Which on the north side, my neighbor built a 12-foot private center on his side, so I'll do the same thing on the south side and, and uh, completely uh, block the trails off from you know, on my property. Um, I plan on doing that anyway. Uh, the other option is uh, I can angle my angle my deck back from my stairs, uh, but, you know, that was not weird. <laughs> so, so um, I'm driving that perfectly straight, so, so uh, whatever you decide, I'll do it. I'm, you know, I'm just here to find a solution and, and, and make everybody happy. So, um, there's a question? I have a couple of questions. Carmel, you can build a 12-foot fence, that's a solution to your love to build a 12-foot fence? In residential districts, we do only see maximum height of state. Okay, so they can build an eight foot fence. So he can do an eight foot unless he plot forbearance to go higher. So we could give, permit him here to build a 12 foot fence? Yes. Did he ask for that? No. No. And we have to do that. Do we have to advertise and meet again to go from eight to 12? To meet the letter of the law, that would be my advice to re advertise and put that as part of his request. I have, I'm, I still have questions. Um, Can I answer that? Sure. The, so the property uh, had to go down towards the lake. So at the lake side, it would be 12 foot. And then, you know what I mean? But, but that's right. still outside of code. Right, right, right. right. Um, the fence that's there is owned by your neighbor, Mr. Ellis. Is that my correct understanding? That's what he is holding. Okay. And um, sometimes it's uh, possible to make a buffer that's not made out of a fence that gets to be taller than 8 or 10 or 12. Like if you put some Leland Cypress mm -hmm. on or something. What you're going to run into, because we're both gardeners. Okay. And I've already <laughs> thought about that. 
you put a Leland Cypress in there, and in three years or more, it's going to be all over the place. There's not enough space there. It's going to be okay, all so over the place. Those skinny, uh, you know, those ones that grow tall and skinny. Hey, if we could put some plants there that would be manageable, that would grow taller than your neighbor would ever. They would block him from you. He doesn't like you looking in his yard. He won't look in your yard either because you'll have this natural buffers. There's some plant that you could consider planting. Yeah, I, I spoke to him about that as well, as well one time, but he, he really uh, uh, he said, I would love to put a book across the kitchen. So, I mean, um, I, I'll do, I'm going to put plants in there, but I'll just do whatever you guys. Like I'm going to make another comment about any type of plants, trees. You're right at the water's edge. Um, this is a perfect hiding spot for snakes. Because we've dealt with it before. I mean, when you're down on a lake like that, you want it cleaned out around the water. Um, we've already had alligators down there. You know, we have to call on that. And so that is, it sounds great. But any other place, I think it would be an answer. But um, okay, the, I just the eave height of that shed right next to the fence mm -hmm. is between eight and nine feet. So, and standing on that dock, on that elevated porch, you would not be able to see over that. So you're fairly close. So if you imagine a twelve foot fence would be a good bit even higher than. Right, well, a 12 foot fence just to me seems excessive in terms of, you know, the, the ugliness of it. Just me, I'm a different person. You know, I don't like a 12 foot solid fence, I just think that that's what's being in prison. It would be um, uh, at 8 foot of shed, and then, you know, you can throw it within my way. Because it's probably close. Are you talking about taking this 12 foot fence all the way out into the water? Just right to the water? Is that still going to, because of the slope of the land, is that still going to keep him from being seen? Uh, or seeing you? Yeah. For, for me standing on my deck, my house is the elevated much higher than the house. The house right. is the house higher, right? So my deck, I'm looking down in the backyard. But if I'm standing on the deck, you know, I'm six foot tall, so, so uh, you put a, and, and the deck's like four feet off the ground, approximately. So that's 10 foot top of my head. So I could do a 10 foot thing you know, high enough where he would never see me, but, but uh, it would just be high enough, you know what I mean? That, that, that would have been, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was what I had already, I went down and walked around and looked and thought about it. If it was stipulated that the fence had to be six foot <coughs> from the deck height. Yes, if you'd have to get over to the deck and you know, peep over to see, it would get on it. He'd probably still be, he'd probably still be around 10 feet, but it wouldn't be quite as high, and maybe not quite as noticeably high. And that gives you privacy on Steve's side, Mr. Ellis. Yes. Unless you're a basketball player, six foot six or something. Oh, right. That's where I'm at. Could I have a question? Come on. Mm -hmm. To get this additional height on the fence, does he have to pay a new application fee? We wouldn't charge him. Okay. You know, because it's something the board is kind of initiating.
But there's no such thing. You can ride that entire lake. There's no such thing as not looking to the left or right and not having your view obstructed to a degree. That's just by nature of the way it's laid out. If I had to, um, I can back my bed, my bed into my back door and I still get to see in, in like a, because my, my deck is high so much higher than I mean, it. I have to demolish the entire deck, put it on the ground to not be able to see in my yard. Um, is this is this a is this your residence or is this a rental property or a, this is what? A okay. And he is a permanent resident next door. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Does anybody else have any comments from the other neighbors? Uh, not a positive comment. That wasn't done so far. Well. Okay. Um, Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else here who would like to speak uh, in favor of this application? Is there anybody here who would like to speak against this application? <coughs> Carmela, did anybody contact your office? Uh, any questions? Anything? Other than um, what you all have to Okay. Does anybody else on the board have any other questions? Somebody like to make a motion? I make a motion to approve as requested areas um, with the option of Mr. Adams putting up a 10 foot, is that what we said, 10 foot or 12? Uh, I heard 12, I know 8 is the maximum that you will see allowed. But if we're going to grant a variance to that requirement, then we may want to re-advertise the space. Uh, yes. The food land is falling off. In order, the extended land has to be 12 feet. And as it comes up, it's going to be huge up here. That's what I was saying. I was, I was thinking, like I said, if you started at the edge of the utility, it was six foot higher than the deck at that point, and it followed it flat out. You can take that as a minimum. It, it won't solve the problem of being more than two feet because it's three, four foot or more out that it goes. But at least you don't have the falling line. At, at the height of the <coughs> shed, uh, where the roof is there, how tall is that? Eight to nine feet. From the ground, from not the from the deck. Right, from, from the, the ground to eight feet. So if we said from to stay in line, he, he can't help it that the ground falls away to the lake. So we say to make it at the eight foot height and straight across then to the edge of the water. However, it ends up, and then I think we wouldn't have to, because it's eight feet and the ground falls away. When I stood on that deck, if that if that fence went to the top of that eave, I would not have been able to see it. I'm a little bit shorter than six feet. Yeah. I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Same. It's an eight foot. It's an eight foot fence. Just fine. From, just the ground, from the ground level. At the, at the edge of the shed, it's eight feet. And then go out to the lake at that same be parallel to the... It'll be level. It won't right. be parallel to right. the ground. It'll be parallel, it'll be level. it'll be level at the top. And it means it's going to be more than eight foot out there, but if we specify... Eight feet at the sh corner of the shed. From the, which, from the corner? Which the corner? <laughs> the corner closest to the lake. Yeah. The, the western edge of the There's building. no sense in building a fence where there's a building stand. That, that's a waste of money. Yeah. Does that make sense, sir? What we're saying? Do we need yeah. a variance if it's just going to go straight out, not follow the slope of the land? A variance, I mean, we can, it would be a condition, a condition for him to build a fence. That would be a condition of yeah. the 
Yeah. Now, measure from the south. Yeah, corner. Yeah. Corner. Yeah. 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 All those in favor?
Any other questions? Yes. Mr. Myers, would you like to speak or somebody else? Yes. Uh, okay. I'm going to just wild card like that with 25 point eight mail. And uh, on that patio, you can't use the patio. <laughs> Sometimes it's too hard. One of the times too cold, like five by five by itself, it ain't easy. And one of the times it ain't going to get any good from the building. So when I thought about putting a roof over it, they could just slide shelter. Tell me how long how long ago was the uh, the existing brick storage already built? Oh, it was built about two thousand six or seven. Okay. All right. Okay. To go back to Tracy, yes. The fireplace meets the side yard at Is that correct? Side for top of the side yes. The eight and nine dollars. And this is a variance to the rear yard setback for the and extension addition of one of the water conditions. And this will be, uh, but there's not any need for the room addition, which is behind this. Isn't that room addition? Oh, no, no. It's oh, the corner. Uh, I see. The, the room addition meets everything. There's, there's no request for variance on that. This is, I see. <coughs> this is the backyard. This is the structure of the fireplace is allowed in that, but not the original building. And now I have a question for you, sir. <laughs> this is going to become a part of your home. You're going to entertain and make your own. Yes. So it's not just going to be accessory anymore. It's going to be an addition. Yes. I that understand. Is my I understand now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, is it going to be enclosed or is it going to be open? It's going to be open. And uh, right now, me and the building, we're trying to come up with some kind of idea. We want to close off some slide shutters. Mm -hmm. The open and close this, just by sliding the close open. But okay. we, we are not sure how we're going to do that yet. But we might have slide shutters closed off. Okay. Here. Yeah. If he starts putting sliding doors, shutters, anything like that, now we are not extending a roof, roof line. We are building additional building, and that's not what we advertise or ask for in the advertisement. And I don't know. I, I think I'm going to have a problem with the, the fact that this is eventually going to be a room, not just a roof line. And this is a, potentially a way to eat the whole apple without paying and doing everything right. So, so like I said, I was, that was an addition that I would, I would like to pay. I can do without the shows if I have to. Well, do, do you understand what I'm saying? The, what was asked for and what was advertised was a roof line. No 
walls, no shutters, no glass, no, no nothing. All over. And we asked for a hot bed. The part that's built where the, the where house is coming out of it. Mm -hmm. We asked for a bathroom, now, which will be bought. And that doesn't, that doesn't mean any variances. Right. Because that means setbacks. It's extending your work line that does not. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like I said, I can do it without the shelter. You know, with this stuff, I would like to look at it. And we should have included that. Actually, I didn't know. And that was, that had not come up. Well, because you can pour concrete all the way up to the property. You just can't build them. And I, I sort of was stretching that concept a little bit by saying when they built the big chimney, that okay, maybe that's just part of the patio. It's not part of the house structure. So maybe we can look a little bit sideways or whatever with that and accept it. When we start bringing the roof line out and tying into it, as long as it is a roof line and nothing else, then I can probably live with that and not vote against it. But like I said, as soon as we start talking about, well, maybe in a couple of years or six months, we're going to start building some walls in there. They're going to be moving then that's, that's not the spirit of what I saw either, and I can't vote. Tracy, wouldn't that be picked up in a building permit because he would have to go back yes, and get a new permit, and yeah. that's when it would kick in that there's going to be more than just a new roof line. There's going to be walls, insulation, um, whatever. Yeah. So I would have to go back and reapply for a regular and that would be if he's going to go back and make that heated square feet part of that. I, were you planning on running electricity out there? Yes. And how is that going to be? It's going to be from in, the, in the overhead or it's going to be in, in side bits? It's going to come to the roof. I mean, put it on the wall. As they put the roof in, it's going to be the wire. How will you reach it? You're going to plug into the to the. I'll I'll follow. See, when the when the bills come in, they will take the existing wire in the roof, right, and bring them out to the new roof. Okay. And the wire will come down. Uh, the wire is already in the fireplace for the switches and everything. When when they built the fireplace, they built the fireplace with wire and plugs already, and when they. Oh. And when they put the roof in, they put on the wire under the roof. And see, the storage house is already wired. Right. It's going to become a part of the storage house. Any, any other questions? here who would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anybody here who would like to speak against this application? Tracy, did we receive any contact regarding this application? Okay. Does anybody else on board have any other questions? Would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to grant the setback variance as presented with the stipulation that this is a roof line only. Citing criteria D. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Five. All those against? One. Uh, very
variance passes. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Make it look nice. Thank you. Thank you. Application is APP 2019 01 Dalton Signs 3645 Inner Perimeter Road. Your last city case is for a Freeways Express signage from Dalton Signs. They are requesting variances regarding their field camping signs. The property is 1.7 acres on the northwestern corner of the perimeter. It is owned in commercial. It's also in the inner perimeter road corridor overlay district. Say that in my terms. Um, they are, <laughs> um, they are the only gas station. They have recently asked for a certificate of occupancy this afternoon, so they are very close to open. They apply their business licenses, um, very close to open. They apply for signage in October. They were able to get the wall signage. It met specifications. They also were able to get one of the two freestanding signs that they applied for. The second one did not meet specifications. They also applied for canopy signage that was too numerous and too large as well. So we talked about variances. They chose to ask for variances for additional wall signage as well as the field canopy signage. They have not chosen to pursue the fuel, I'm sorry, the additional freestanding signage from a variance standpoint at this point. We reviewed the variance application. The additional wall signage did not need a variance. It was something that I could forget and they are aware of that. However, the fuel energy signage does need a variance in order for us to occur. What they have asked for is a Canopy sign, such as that, I don't know what the official name of that trademark or logo is, I can call it a sign. They are asking for a sign on the inner perimeter sign as well as the east and the west canopies. They're asking for a friendly express sign on the front of the inner perimeter sign. That's what I'm referring to as the front of the inner perimeter sign. So, four signs, all total, four <coughs> canopy, canopy signs, dual canopy signs are allowed The sun is 24 and a half square feet, so one large for the 16 square feet permit with I can permit. So they're asking for a sun on the western and the eastern side of the canopy at 24 and a half square feet each. They're also asking for a sun on the northern <coughs> perimeter side as well. So adding that 24 and a half square feet to the friendly express, that is 39.85 square feet. They are asking for a total of 64.35 square feet of canopy signage for the front view of the side, with 16 square feet and one sign is all that they're allowed. So, too many and too large, and unfortunately, staff can permit. We reviewed the request, found no hardship, and recommended it. Um, isn't this the same group that did the other gas station and out across from the VW dealership? Road. Yes. Yes, sir. Is that, um, and I'm, we might need to ask the, the applicant, but um, is this essentially the same signage that is asked to be applied, to, that was applied already over there? That I don't know. I prefer the applicant. On the, on the existing one? Okay. And county staff. Okay. okay. And I, that's my next question was, is that in the county? And it's, okay. All right. Okay. They have similar freestanding signs, they have similar wall signs, but I did not see any canopy signs when I read Okay. Tracy, I got a quick question. Why does a variance application submitted in November take until February 5th to be heard? The cycle deadline for each month ZBOA is the 25th. So if they had made it by the 25th of September, it would have appeared on the January docket. They were a few days shy. They were a few days late past that 25th of November. Um, so unfortunately, we weren't able to slip it into the January docket. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's on the February docket. The 
raised in Maine, we have public hearing deadlines that we have to advertise in the BDP. We have to put out the public hearing signs as well as send out certified letters to the adjacent property owners to give us time to meet those requirements as well as to send out the cases to staff for comment consideration from staff. It takes that long. Is it for advertised four consecutive weeks in the ballot period of time? I Is believe, I believe once, maybe twice. Oh, it's once or twice? Right. And it has to be between either, I think it's between either 15, or no, I have to be between 15 and 30 days time in here. No less than 15, no more than 45 days. Okay. So the cutoff is the 25th. Right. So if it had been submitted okay. November 25th, then everything starts running in December. For a hearing on the first Tuesday in January. Correct, yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions to staff? Thank you. Is the applicant here? Uh, Renee Buehler, Robin Franklin, 610 North Beach Street, King Louisville. Can I ask your questions about 105? This is from the Express 106. The signs are not on the canopy because they started their construction to just get the necessary signs so they could open, but let they me, are in production. Let me clarify my comment. I drove by the city's the city site, and of course there weren't any canopy signs on the canopy because they haven't been permitted yet. But I also drove by the county friendlies on North Road and there weren't any signs on that canopy. They're currently in production and permitted in the So they'll be going up I think they're not. Okay, so the signs that you are proposing to put on North Valdosta Road have been permitted? Paid for and approved in production. So they would, the, the county allowed that much signage on the county? Okay. Um, in addition, what's not in there, it doesn't show hardship because of your zoning, but um, this marketing and branding is set up just like Shell, BP, Marathon. So when they made this branding guide for these new sites, um, the blue little square that you see, the only thing that's illuminated on that is the yellow. The blue is the canopy station. Um, the white letters are from the express, and I'm sorry. I need everybody to back at a, a, site, a site that already has all of these, but I left them on my desk. But I have one copy if you want to look. Sure. So you can see, That's what the letters are like. And the sunburst is just a part of the game. Just the yellow part. So currently they have two sides. That's a um in Brunswick. They have two in Brunswick, two in Waycross that are designed just like this. Uh, the one right down the road, which will have those signs on them by the end of the month. And proposed in the next Monument. 
right? And the second one was higher than 50% of that. Right. So they're trying to compromise with taking that right. weight and just putting this here. Right. It's only right. one actual text reading from the express. Any other questions? Thank you. I have a question for staff if I can. Yes, sir. The sign that is on Perimeter Road now, it beats everything. It is how many square feet? I do not remember how many square feet, but it didn't have. What is the maximum they can have on Beach Road as a secondary sign? They chose the number There obviously is not anybody else here to speak for or against. Was there any contact to your office? Just one staff who was asked, one staff who was asked to the block of variance process. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions? None? All right. Would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the variance request as presented. Okay. We have a second. Second. All right. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. All right. changes anything to the minutes Yeah, it's true. And he told me a story about uh, 